Good morning, everybody. It's the 30th of October. We are Signal Centre Talking Ball. I'm Joe Neighbour, joined by Ian Coleman and Steve O'Hare. Morning, guys. Morning, morning. chaps. Happy Friday. Yes. Indeed. Well, for uh, some, it is. <laughs> and happy end of the month. Yeah. Oh, well, nice. See a bit of old today, then. Quite possibly a bit of uh, window dressing ahead of the uh, end of the month. Yeah, Often yeah. brings a bit of volatility. Not that we need any excuses at the minute. No, no can you say, there, isn't it? elections, ECB meetings. Mind you, Lagarde was a bit boring yesterday. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so ECB meeting yesterday, they delivered the market. Uh, sorry, the message the markets were expecting, and that is that they're ready to act in December. She said there is little doubt that the bank will agree on a new set of stimulus measures as rising COVID-19 infections and renewed lockdowns threaten another major hit to the European economy. So. Uh, the ECB are ready to act um, and everybody's expecting that now to be in December. And I guess that's probably the sensible play, given obviously that we've got the election next week and uh, that could create further uh, chaos in the markets, potentially. Um, US uh, hit a record just to have 91,000 fresh infections in a single day. Um, that could be to the detriment of Trump because obviously he's facing heavy criticism over the way that he has handled uh, the well, virus. And, and handling his, uh, yeah. his campaign. I, I watched it last night. I don't think there's one person in the crowd with a mask on. Yeah. Just... I mean, he doesn't help matters, does he? Because he just... Biden's using it as leverage, well. isn't he? So. Yeah, and it, you know, I think it's it's you know, front and center of everybody's uh, minds at the minute. So it's probably the right tactic to to take. But um, we haven't got much longer to find out, or have we? Um, there is uh, the potential threat of uh, recounts. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of postal votes that have gone in because people don't want to go out and vote. Um, so it may be a case that Trump refuses to accept if he loses and demands recounts. And that could go on for weeks, if not months yeah. before we actually get a final result. So I mean, uh, watching the news last night, every uh, one of his supporters that you spoke to, they turned around and said, Oh, it's going to be, yeah, Trump win, Trump win. Unless, you know, there's fiddling with, unless the he doesn't, unless there's, <laughs> unless there's fiddling. every single one of them's brainwashed. That yeah. The, well, that's uh, the thing. The polls, He's, the polls are going to be fiddled with. Yeah. He's, he's, been very consistent with that message and you know is obviously uh creating um doubt in all the minds of of the uh the electoral uh the electorates and it's it's going to be a, a pretty uh pretty mm. crazy time i think yeah that's all um, we need a few riots on the streets as well then yeah well there's you can't rule it out can you no um well, so I I've... what you could do you could go to um why don't you go on holiday if you just like feel like that what to america because... Yeah, because you know where you can go. Can Hawaii. Everyone? Hawaii now. Can you? Hawaii's uh, stopped the 14-day uh, quarantine lot after you arrive. They're right. now saying you go to get yourself tested at a, um authorised testing facility within wherever you are, the US, I, I presume they're talking about. Um, and then 72 hours, uh, the results come back and you're allowed entry. Right. All right. So well, they, they, they yeah. hold you at the airport. Um, stick you in, I think it's the Hilton, and you get a test back within 24 hours. Nice one. Like that. See? Good. And just cheap, hope cheap you're holiday. not... A couple of cheap holidays. <laughs> <laughs> just hope you're not on the plane on the way home. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Anyway. Um, okay, so overnight we saw some, um, some selling, uh, particularly in um, stocks, and that was set about because of uh, weakness in the tech stocks reporting yesterday. So it was a who's who of tech stocks yesterday reporting. We had Apple. Uh, they extended the fall in after hours trading because iPhone sales are missed estimates. We also had face, uh, Facebook, but despite posting a huge beat, they slipped after hours flagging uncertainties ahead. Amazon also reported uh, big rise in sales as expected, but higher expenses due to COVID-19, which they expect will hit profits. So um, that dragged markets lower. Obviously, they've also been the factor that have dragged markets higher uh, over the recent months. Um, but how's that, uh, how's that look on the uh, on the chart, Steve? What's uh, going on with yeah. the indices today? Well, NASDAQ, especially the, obviously talking about the tech sector, um, we can see this is the weekly chart. So this is something we highlighted um, last couple of weeks ago. We obviously had this shooting star candle, very negative formation. 
uh, shooting star um, and evening star formation. And then we've had the follow through this week. Now, this is broken out of this orange channel. You can see this orange channel highlighted here. It's broken uh, lower than that. So that does uh, warn of a um, potential reversal now. Uh, but we still have to break the neckline. Now, the neckline is upward sloping. So we could get an aggressive break of this. That's, um, But we still haven't broken it. So you can't say this is a head and shoulders formation until we confirm that break. Uh, along with uh, confirming the break, that's the uh, first thing that uh, sellers will look for. But then they will also want to see this uh, horizontal support broken as well. Uh, so that comes in, that the major one comes in at 10,314. Once we see that, I do expect uh, to see the measured move play out. The measured move of this formation will be, we measure the top of the head to the neckline and we project it lower. So the measured move of the formation gets down towards the 9,000 level. What fib is so, that? That's the 61.8. So that's, a, again, a decent co correction fib. Uh, in between that, we've got the 51, 50% uh, 50 Fibonacci, which comes in around about 9,600, which is was also the 17th of Feb swing high when coronavirus first impacted the markets. So that, for me, is the level we're going to be targeting. I really do believe. And it's that. still bullish there, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 not a bearish market. We're, we're, we're sort of we've had, we've had a correction. That's it. So you know, you get look all the way back, and you can see that you know going back to two thousand and what does it go back to? It goes out of two thousand and eight. It's just yeah. a minor correction. It's you yeah. know don't. Um, but people will start to panic and um, and think it's the end of the world. It's a minor correction, uh, but it's there's good potential here, and uh, there's all the signs are, are saying we're going to go there. So um, I'll be looking to sell rallies in NASDAQ. Uh, overnight, we've obviously had a correction higher, looking to sell value areas, um, looking for this sell-off. Uh, uh, the only thing with this, you have to carry it over the weekend. There's high risk there. So yeah. be very careful with anything like that. I'll just focus on that one, really. The, the others are, are following suit. I think that the European sector, uh, a little bit similar. The FTSE re reacted off the uh, this bearish channel. Um, DAX has had a little bit of reaction higher. I think uh, European uh, markets feel a bit more under pressure than the US markets, funnily enough, at the moment. And obviously, you've got the, um, you've got the uh, polls coming out next Tuesday, is it, the the, the polls? And um, we, we'll start... Well, it's the actual election, like, isn't it, on Tuesday? Yeah, so that you, you'll have the exit polls that, that right, will sort okay. of be impacting on that day. So, uh, you know, if, if Trump looks like he's going to uh, take a beating, then these markets will get sold even more aggressively. Okay, um, great. So, Ian, what's going on in the FX markets? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Not too sure. I, I agree on the long term. I think um, it's definitely risk off. But short term, I think we could see a bit of a risk on day today. Um, this is the. If you looked at uh, the dollar index, the normal dollar index, then it looks pretty bullish. We've had a symmetrical pattern uh, here. Uh, free ways, free ways, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but if we go to the basket, Joe's equal, basket. Equal weighted dollar equal basket. Equal weighted dollar basket. We've got this confluence area here, which has made a um, a uh, cipher pattern, and we've moved to the downside. So as long as that doesn't break, that could indicate uh, risk off uh, today. We are starting to see a little move to the upside, but as long as that top holds, and we could see risk off. So I've just been looking at the risk currencies uh, this morning. And um, you've got to remember the big picture is still bullish. So I think it, if we move lower, it is an opportunity to get uh, long of dollars, as Steve said. So uh, sort of selling into rallies in stocks. If you look at this, and this is the yen basket, and we talked about this yesterday. Now, these have, don't have a tendency to move in straight lines. So basically, I do think this is a correction to the upside and they go in three waves. So basically one, two, three, but they don't just go in three waves. And the, the corrective formations are always the hardest uh, to um, analyze. So basically what normally happens is we get inside waves. So we get one, two, three, then one, two, three, and then one, two, three to, to clear it up. So three waves of three waves, basically. Uh, and the reason that I'm saying that is is that that's what potentially we're looking at at the moment. So free up, free down, free up. So that would indicate that the next move is free down. 
um, and that would mean uh, risk on. And if I'm going to this one here, even though we've got potential to get up to here on, on a five wave sequence, <clears throat> I think with this confluence area here, which is holding at the moment, we could see uh, yen uh, drop to the downside today. Uh, and reflecting that, so basically temporary risk on, and if you reflect that back onto euro dollar, do you remember this week we've always been talking about this area here, which is quite critical. It's an 88.6% pullback level um, of this last rally. And they typically make a, um, a BC leg of uh, the cipher patterns. So if I move it down to there. So that's 116.42. Now, if we go to is it this time frame, no, this one. If we go to this time frame, 116.35 um, is a inside cipher. Um, so I'm really wary about uh, downside pressure uh, today or upside pressure, I should say, in the dollar because really euro is going nowhere. It's all driven by uh, the dollar index at the moment. And if you look, so basically a slight downward bias in the dollar and an upward bias in, um, in euro dollar. And if you look at other pairs, dollar pairs, this looks like a big expanding wedge formation in uh, sterling dollar, which has a bias to break to the upside. We've just seen an outside candle posted uh, on this four hour chart, which will close at nine o'clock, just closed. Uh, dollar Swiss, again, we've got a 224% uh, up here, uh, possible um, rejection, but again, buying into dips. So this will be the left shoulder. This will be a two headed beastie and then move down to form uh, a right shoulder. Um, dollar CAD, again, sort of a bit of a confluence area, but if you look at, uh, what was it I was looking at? This, then this is a potential head and shoulders formation. So left shoulder, head, right shoulder, you'd need a break of this neckline uh, to confirm that dollar bias. And then Aussie dollar is the last one. Uh, impulsive move to the downside with that risk off um, sentiment. But if we get a break of this level here, and we don't see a confluence area until up to up here, which would really mean that risk on is 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 dominant, if you like. Um, Euro sterling and uh, sterling Swiss with um, Brexit talks and all the rest of it. I can't get anything on those whatsoever at the moment. Um, and here was Euro yen, which is the last one I'll talk about. Uh, so again, you've just got this confluence area here, 161.8 percent extension. Um, and a 224, uh, which makes some sort of cipher pattern. I can't remember which one it is. Um, I'll tell you which one it is. Crab. Um, so I just think that today we could see a turnaround in sentiment. And if I just go, so basically on the back of that, I've been looking at indices. Like Steve said, um, you've got channel base in uh, FTSE. It's a 161.8% extension level, so maybe just a mild correction to the upside. Uh, DAX, we've got that head and shoulders formation there, but we've also got a 38.2% FIB here, um, which is a very common um, FIB level for larger corrections. So basically what I mean there is if you get a 38.2, then the pullbacks are normally limited, and I think that reverse trend line resistance looks prime. But then the next leg is very aggressive and should take us all the way down here to 88.5 um and then last one i was looking at this uh the dow and we've got a confluence area here which again makes another cipher pattern so i just think i'm just wary of current levels i think you might get a dip lower First thing in the morning, maybe a bit of if you're looking at one hour charts, four hour charts, you might get a bit of bullish divergence, catch everybody offside and then move to the upside. Cool. Thanks, That's what Ian. I'm thinking. Um, yeah. OK, so let's have a look at the guns and head stuff from yesterday. Um, really quite difficult markets over the last couple of days, I think. But um, well, I would say that because I've had two stop outs. But uh, here, uh, who had a win yesterday? Steve, you had a win on gold. I think I'd win 3 3 yeah. 
Oh, well done. Um, so, yeah, there's a sheet. Save the day. Uh, I think, Ian, you were flat on Aussie Yen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had a very small loss, I believe. Yeah, three tick loss, 0.07 R loss. And I had a stop out on Aussie Swiss of 22 ticks. So one R loss. Um, so uh, still in this sort of minor correction following that crazy run that we had uh, very recently. So looking to get back to winning ways today if we can. Not expecting conditions to be particularly great today, given that it's the month end, it's the end of the week, and obviously we've got a huge event uh, next week in the form of a US election. So um, who's going to go first? Um, I, I won't go first. I'm just look, looking at the gun to head, actually, the win rates and stuff. And we're sort of seeing, obviously, it's amazing, like, you Joe, you've got a 45% win rate, but your return is 61%. Ian's got a much better win rate. His return is 27 and mine's shockingly bad. Um, but the return is still 20%. Yeah. Just sort of goes to show that you don't have to have every trade. Well, obviously, every trade, most trades lose money. Um, but it's all about the money management money side management, of things. Yeah. Absolutely. And so just I'll making sure that risk reward is right. Yeah, default expectations when we're going into these trades is that we are going to lose money, and that's a really hard mind, mindset to get uh, to get your head around, um, because we you know we all want to win every time we we trade. But uh, the reality is, you know, we've been doing this for however long we've been doing it. How many trades have we posted now? Six hundred ninety-three mm. trades. Um, you know, and if you'd followed all of these with a one percent risk on your account, you'd be doing very well. Um, but, but then know, if, they see us, rates, uh... if they see us presenting the trade ideas, they're probably thinking, I can't follow they, them three idiots. <laughs> 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 but listen, I, I saw like some automated uh, analysis and trade uh, trade strategies uh, the other day on one of the platforms. I won't name don't, don't name who they them. are. And, <laughs> uh, but some of them, were sort of like, the risk reward was we'll like... Just, we'll stick it in the, stick it in not the chat, point, shall we? 0.5 to 1. So it's like, oh, Stevie, oh, Ralph's online. Look, you've got, you got there. A, you've got a fan. Go, Just Ralphie. The, go, Ralphie. Go, Ralphie. Hi, <laughs> um, Stevie. Hey. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hi, mate. All right. Hope you've got our good. numbers up. Got our numbers such, up. He's, such, he, he's, he's absolutely smashing it at school as well. He got some really good uh, results. I think he's up to like level six or seven in his history, oh, stuff yeah. like that. And he's really doing well. I'm very proud. He's still got that mad white curly hair. He's got he's still got that mad mop of hair. And I am going mm. to sort of like sneak into his bedroom one night and shave it all off. Shear uh, him. I hope. Watch uh, yeah, out. he'll be fine. He'll look he'll look really cool uh, the next day. So yeah, cool. good to right. see you, Ralph. Ian, you got a trade yeah. ready for <laughs> I have. Um, 93.89 getting short of the dollar index. You got it the wrong way around there. Uh, it was like one of those trades that you see on one of the on one of those platforms that we won't mention. So. Yeah, <laughs> with a risk reward. Yeah. Yeah, reward of minus four. Um, getting short at 93.89, targeting 93.01, stop at 94.11. Okay. Good stuff. Steve, you got anything? Yeah, I've got something. Uh, got just sort of like reiterate about yesterday. The one thing I was saying about yesterday, especially these US stocks, what happens is they were, they, they were, they'd sold off and we were looking at gun to head and I really wanted to sell them. But I did say as soon as they the markets open up, they had this spike up after the market opens and they did the same yesterday. They had the spike up and then the sell off came. So the gun, my gun to the head yesterday, if I went short on the indices, would have been stopped out. So I'm going to go with gold again. Um, I am, I'm sort of, uh, I've got, a, I can agree with Ian on, on to a certain extent about this um, potential for a little bit of a squeeze higher uh, short term. Uh, and I'm going to go on that with gold. Uh, our um, intraday trade idea is uh, long of gold at these levels, 1870, uh, the stops at 1860. I'm going to go with that. I quite like the idea. It's trading at 18. 71 i'll stop out at 1861 and i'll go for 1891 target i think um our target on the uh intraday trade idea is around about 1900 dollars. i'm just going to step in front of that two to one risk reward lovely brilliant okay i'm going to take a look at dollar cad i think ian made a 
decent case for a small head and shoulders top forming on that obviously it's very speculative at this stage doesn't complete until we break that neckline which for me would be a move below 32.95 um so i'm going to set it at market which is 133.28 i've got a measured move if this completes down at 31.99 so we just go 32 uh double zero on that uh with a stop loss at 33.72 so that would be a three to one risk reward on that one if that plays out from here uh, ultra speculative as it hasn't completed yet so a preemptive move on that today uh, I just just want to adjust my stop to 1866 I'm going to be a bit tighter so it's going to take it to a four to one risk reward the 1866 is just below the print just swing high swing low that's just happened yeah. so then a stops just 1866 not 1861 so it looks like a little ascending triangle doesn't it oh yes oh, short could be. Term. yeah boom like it, like it. lovely Okay, so data today, we have Eurozone GDP, the third quarter, that's expected to rise to 7.5% from minus 11.8% previously. We also have CPI inflation for October, um, which is predicted to rise to 0.2% month on month from 0.1% uh, a month previous. So only European data today, both out at 11 o'clock. On the earnings front, it's a much uh, much less stacked car than it was yesterday. It was over 400 companies that reported yesterday, only 132 today. Some of the biggest names I picked out were Abvi, Under Armour, ExxonMobil, and Honeywell. So nothing in terms of tech that's going to be particularly market moving, I don't think, but uh, you never know. Um, anything else, gents, before we wrap it up for the week? No, that's, no. that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, best of luck with your trades then and uh, good luck to everybody else that's trading. Have a fantastic weekend and we will be back on Monday morning. Yeah, enjoy. Cheers. Good luck. Cheers, Bye. guys. Bye-bye.